Hey everybody, Josh back again with another writer's vlog. The first one seemed to get an okay response. We'll see how this one goes, and if this one gets a pretty good response, I'll keep this series going. So, let's get started. This week's topic is rejection, and rejection's a hard one to talk about because we, everybody, deals with rejection in some facet of our lives. Whether it's artistic rejection, or romantic rejection, or rejection within the workplace, or whatever, we all have to deal with it, and how we react to it uh, has a really big impact on our lives moving forward, at least temporarily, if not permanently. So, yes, I have received rejection letters, I received rejection emails, and basically, most of them are really polite. I've, I, don't, actually, I don't think I've ever gotten a rude one. I've seen rude ones posted on the internet. And they're like, hey, can you believe this? And I'm like, oh my god, no I can't. But I've never gotten a rude one. Most of the rejection letters I've gotten have been absolutely zero help. So don't count on a rejection letter to give you any kind of pointers. If they do, then they actually like your stuff and you probably want to resubmit after you've taken into account their tips or their uh, critique or whatever. Uh, one time, one time only did I ever get a, hey, you know, you might want to try this. And so I did, and I resubmitted it, and I actually published a poem in the Ampersand Review. And that's been a few years ago. I would show you guys a copy of it, but I'm totally out of hard copies. I think I gave them all away. But yeah, so that, that's the one and only thing I've ever had published, like, professionally. And it was because I got this great rejection letter that said, we liked what you did, try doing this. And I did, and I resubmitted it, and they accepted it. And of course, we've all heard the stories about how many times J.K. Rowling was rejected, you know, when she was trying to get Harry Potter published. Now, here's the thing. We all hear about how many times she was rejected, but we hear nothing about how many rewrites she did. I've never seen that number anywhere. Did she rewrite it? Did she you know, do, do edits? Did she change things here or there to make it more uh, receivable or whatever? And that is one thing I try to do, is when I'm rejected, I look at whatever piece I've submitted and I say, okay, what about this did they reject? And, it, because if, and if they don't tell me, I have to kind of figure it out for myself. And if I'm honest with myself, I can usually spot it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that was weak there. That could use improvement. And I can go back and I can do a rewrite and make it better. Now, I am, I'm, to, I'm not a professional creative writer. I'm a professional technical writer. And so there's rejection in that all the time. Every day there, there is rejection. So I'm, I'm used to dealing with it. And I've mentioned in previous videos that I did a lot of workshops when I was in college, a lot of creative writing workshops, and there is absolutely nothing that will get you used to rejection than sitting in a room with 30 of your peers as they wipe their asses with your manuscript. So that's you, you kind of develop a thick skin as you go forward. And don't, don't get me wrong, it still hurts. Every rejection letter you get is gonna sting. But my suggestion is take a deep breath and be honest with yourself. And that doesn't mean get down on yourself. And it's really hard, it, don't get me wrong, it is really, really hard to be honest with yourself without getting down on yourself. But try, be honest with yourself and say, okay, what can I do to make this better? And I would also say, don't critique yourself too much. Give it to someone else. Give it to someone you trust to be honest with you and to give you constructive criticism. I remember I was in a relationship years ago and I had written a short story and I gave it to my girlfriend at the time and she read a little bit of it and she goes, this is stupid. And that was absolutely devastating. She had the wrong kind of personality to be critiquing anything because she was, well, mean and soul-crushing and evil. But now, I know I can give anything I've written to Anna and she will read it and she will judge it fairly and give me an honest critique and constructive criticism. So find somebody like that that you can let read whatever it is you're writing, whether it's a poem, a short story, a novel, novella, whatever. Find someone you can trust to give you that constructive criticism. It's absolutely imperative. And don't take their constructive criticism to heart. Don't take it personally, which is also 
really, really hard. When somebody says something potentially negative about something you've written, it is very, very hard not to take it personally. But just take a deep breath, understand that whoever you've asked or whoever you've submitted your, your manuscript to, they don't mean it personally, and try your best not to take it personally. I really wish I had some rejection letters left over to show you guys. I've thrown them all out, I've deleted all the emails because that's all in the past, and I prefer to leave any rejections I've had in the past. I don't go back and read them. I don't wallpaper the walls with them. I, I read it, I process it, and I put it behind me, and I move on. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to click that like button, subscribe for more content, comment if you're a writer and you've got a great rejection letter story, let us know in the comments, would love to hear that. If you're a writer and you've published something, link that in the comments, that's totally fine, I'm down for that. So, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.